Good afternoon, everyone. You're able to see my slides now, Dr. Lang? Yes, we can. Thank you. This is a very big topic. Uh, please bear with me as I go through them uh, this afternoon. Uh, we'll focus more on the case review uh, with a little bit of introduction and um, uh, pathology. Today, I'll be talking about uh, two uh, neurotoxicity that we're seeing lately as a neuro, neuro hospitalist or a neurologist with primary hospital-based practice. One is coming from the CAR T-cell neurotoxicity and the other one is checkpoint inhibitor neurotoxicity. The CAR T-cell, we believe at this time, based on information, is most likely related to the cytokines, what we call the inflammatory secretome and the endothelial disruption. While the checkpoint inhibitor neurotoxicity is believed to be secondary to the autoimmune immunity or the paraneoplastic process that we all as neurologists are familiar with when you're taking care of cancer patients. First, I will focus on uh, um, <clears throat> CAR T cell therapy. As we know, uh, because of the uh, variable fraction created in the engineering of this uh, patient's own T cells that can engage the pair tumor, like for example, the CD19, the most common um, uh, targeted uh, uh, tumor antigen at the, at the moment uh, uh, with a hinge and um, the engineering uh, leading to uh, specific domains intracellularly. Uh, so you have 411BB or for CD28 are the most common uh, codomain intracellularly. Uh, so <clears throat> these tend to target the CD19. Why engineer this way is to uh, engage the T cell, to engage the tumor cells without depending on the uh, MHC um, uh, domains. So you have an effective living T cells that can en uh, engage the tumor cells um, for close to one year and beyond. So we are at the second generation of the CD CD19, uh, second generation of this CAR T cell. So we have uh, 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 two uh, uh, products, 411BB co-stimulated domain and CD28 co-stimulated domain. Uh, so these are all the FDA approved at this time. Uh, and we have one that was very recently approved for um, multiple myeloma. I, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit towards the very end. So these are the four, uh, four uh, currently available uh, CAR T cell products. At MD Anderson, uh, we dealt with uh, predominantly uh, uh, AXI uh, captagen. Uh, luckily for all these uh, drugs, we have a uh, common uh, name and uh, we, you can just, just get a phone call from our oncologist. Hey, we are given a patient with Axicel or Ascot and, and uh, patient is having neurotoxicity, we would like you to see. So but getting familiar with these uh, names is, uh, is important. So why learn about the co-stimulated domain? The 411BP is supposed to be less toxic uh, compared to the CD28 uh, domain. So if you have elderly folks who, elderly folk, uh, elderly patient who has a uh, um, refractory uh, lymphoma and uh, you want to prevent neurotoxicity, you probably would be going for this uh, uh, agent compared to uh, CD28 domain. So uh, please remember most of these are relapsed, uh, very refractory lymphoma uh, uh, patients uh, for which these uh, drugs are being tried. Only Kimria or uh, Tisa cell is the one approved for leukemia. So most are for uh, lymphoma. Uh, the most recent uh, products approved are uh, Ticartes for mantle cell lymphoma and the uh, Brianzi for again, uh, refractory relapsed lymphomas. So uh, as most of us uh, know, uh, you know, the blood is uh, collected from the patient, T cells are isolated and you do, and you transduce with the viral vectors and then expand the uh, T cell and then a patient is given back uh, this T cell, pro engineered T cell products. They do get um, uh, lympho depletion prior to the immunotherapy um, uh, and, and the patients are monitored subsequently um, for a development of neurotoxicity, uh, cytokine release syndrome, for, and um, um, followed for infections. Um, so uh, this is a, a common uh, procedure. They're prophylaxed with the antifungal and um, uh, antiviral PCP uh, prophylaxis. And uh, for the CD19 uh, uh, products, they, they do uh, receive uh, anti-seizure prophylaxis, generally it's a Kepra uh, to prevent seizures. So why talk about CAR T cells is because of the efficacy, you know, 
both in the uh, standard of care uh, as well as in the drug trials that led to the uh, acceptance by the FDA and publications in the New England Journal article. Uh, uh, it turns out to be the standard of care is, is, is sustained. Uh, he, the results are sustainable um, as compared to the uh, drug trials. So, so we will see a greater, greater uh, amount of uh, patients in the hospital. Uh, so the frequency will keep rising. Uh, so as neurologists, we should uh, be familiar with the neurotoxicities and what to expect from these products. So as we know, uh, the CAR T cells are, are living, living drugs. The, there's a proliferation of these um, um, uh, 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 lymphocytes and, and sustain in, in, the, in the patient's body. Uh, this is up to 75 days, but now it has been known they go up to one year. So they do sustain. Uh, so these are living drugs. So for, for them to uh, proliferate uh, and uh, handle the, 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 the tumor to, to targets, they do need the cytokines. The, the cells themselves produce CAR T cells. Uh, the CAR T cells themselves produce cytokines. Um, um, but keep in mind, having a lymphoma um, and, the, and the chemotherapy uh, prior to receiving CAR T cells all, all do uh, increase in the cytokines, uh, both uh, pre pre uh, prior to the CAR T cell infusion as well as post CAR T cell infusions. So the cytokines are uh, important for the uh, CAR T cells to proliferate, but unfortunately they are also associated with the toxicities, both from a systemic standpoint, what we call this uh, cytokine release syndrome, and from the neuro neurotoxicity, what we call the ICANS. Uh, so this is the cytokine storm that happens after the CAR T cell infusion. These, you see all these uh, cytokines um, uh, being um, uh, increased um, and uh, sustained for, for an amount of uh, time, but the peak uh, instances are mostly happening uh, within a 10 day uh, time frame. And that's when we see most of our toxicities, the cytokine release syndrome or the neurotoxicity. So the cytokine storms uh, we are all familiar with and it's been uh, become uh, more um, you know, within our uh, field because of the uh, COVID-19 and that led to the New England Journal article by our uh, Dr. June who, worked, who was the um, uh, predominant um, um, research scientist who uh, led to the uh, um, availability of the CAR T cells in the real world. So he's, he's the author for this uh, New England Journal article. Uh, so as you can see, the cytokines affect uh, multiple organs at, at, at multiple, lev at, at multiple uh, levels. But importantly, more, uh, looking at more at the vascular uh, levels, you know, they can cause endothelial damage and they cause uh, vascular per permeability, including the blood-brain uh, barrier permeability. And, and these are all are important as we talk about the neurotoxicity, especially the cerebral edema. So these are the common CD19 toxicities. Uh, you know, as neurologists, you know, um, we work we work in tandem with our oncologists, uh, trying to understand some of these uh, toxicities and uh, be a partner with them to have, to uh, take care of the patient. So from a from a neurology standpoint, it's the neurotoxicity. What what is now called ICANS. Uh, I'll uh, um, define the this uh, definition in the next few slides. The neurotoxicity occurs. Concurrently, along with the CRS, it often occurs generally after the CRS subsides, or it can be delayed up to three or four weeks. It is now believed the cytokine release syndrome, neurotoxicity, or the uh, macrophage activating syndrome, what we call the hemophagocytic uh, uh, toxicity, are all part of a spectrum of macrophage activation syndrome. Uh, so. We met back in 2018 to grade the neurotoxicity, to define the neurotoxicity, as well as the CRS um, uh, uh, sponsored by the uh, uh, Blood and uh, Marrow Transplant Society. It, the, the toxicity definitions have now standardized. It is being applied throughout um, any of the products that are coming out uh, throughout the world now. The ICANS uh, that is associated the neurotoxicity associated with the CAR T cells is called ICANS. Um, the ICANS is defined uh, by you know, uh, neurological syndrome uh, resulting from activation or engagement of the infused T cells um, or other immune effector cells. Um, uh, so the symptoms and signs uh, you know, are related to the aphasia, altered level of consciousness, impairment of the cognitive skills, 
the motor weakness, seizures, and the cerebral edema. So, and the eye cans can be caused by CAR T cells or any other immune effector cell engaging therapy like blinatubumab. Um, and we have seen a similar type of uh, neurotoxicity with these uh, drugs. The, the, how do you uh, uh, assess the neurotoxicity? One is the encephalopathy score, what's called an ICE. It's, it's nothing different from how you assess as a neurologist any other delirious patient. But here we try to standardize this, gave it a 10 points, and this is, is, is a routine um, uh, neurology assessment of any altered mental status patient in, in, the, in, the, in the hospital. But in addition to the I score, the encephalopathy score, these are the uh, what, we, what I call the red flags that you should be all, uh, looking for when you're asked to assess a patient in the middle of the night. The red flags are how, how, how what, is the, what is the level of consciousness? How, how, how awake or how comatose is a patient? The higher grades you know, is obviously the, the coma. Is a patient having seizures, a simple seizure that is easily controlled or a life-threatening seizures? And are there any new motor, motor weakness? Any new motor weakness, unfortunately, falls in the higher grade. Are there any signs of uh, early cerebral edema, any signs of increased intracranial pressure? So any, any focal edema or, or diffuse cerebral edema? So these are, these are the red flags, I would say, in addition to the encephalopathy score that leads to the total uh, score of the neurotoxicity resulting from CAR T cells. Uh, similarly, you have the uh, uh, cytokine release syndrome assessment. Just like these uh, two rainbows uh, shown in this um, uh, picture, the CRS tends to occur early. The, the ICANs tend to occur a little bit later, and it consists of two things, basically. One is the encephalopathy score, a uh, total of 10 points. And the other one is the red flags that I talked about. What is the level of consciousness? What is the, is the patient having any seizures, easily controlled or poorly controlled? Is the patient having a new onset motor weakness? Is the patient having any cerebral edema? So these are all the red flags in regards to the CAR T cell neurotoxicity. So we do have these apps available that are for free, uh, you know, developed by our wonderful nurse practitioner, uh, Sherry Atkins. Uh, so these are available for free, both from the app, uh, Apple, as well as the Google. So I would highly recommend, please download this. Uh, it, it goes through the grading easily. It goes through the assessment at the bedside. It goes through the uh, ma management of the neurotoxicity as well as the CRS. But important, lately we have also added uh, infection uh, control, which we are seeing a little bit more. And I'll show you some cases of it. So we all know that the IL-6 levels are related to the cytokine release syndrome. Uh, in, in the beginning, uh, our oncologists, because they're dealing with the refer, uh, very refractory, relapsed leukemia, lymphoma patients, you know, they, they, try, they were reluctant to use steroids, but use more of tocilizumab. Uh, or, or IL-6 uh, antagonist. One was the tocilizumab and the other one was the Siltax. Tocilizumab was the most common one, but you got to understand tocilizumab work, um, uh, works at the receptor. So when it blocks the receptor, your IL-6 IL levels actually uh, bump up, or they, they elevate. Unfortunately, this is uh, for the neurotoxicity as well at the beginning of the, uh, these trials, Oncologists were using tocilizumab, and we felt and we realized that the patients were, while the CRS is controlled, they were suffering from greater degree of neurotoxicity. It is now recognized that the use of tocilizumab for just neurotoxicity or ICANS is not recommended. Tocilizumab is only to be used for CRS only, but, not, but if a CRS is associated with the neurotoxicity, please use tocilizumab. Uh, on siltuximab, on, on the other hand, it, it uh, binds to the IL-6 IL that is circulating. So IL siltuximab is, is in part of uh, trials as, uh, for use of um, um, ICANS uh, now because it binds to the IL circulating IL-6 and brings the IL-6 levels um, um, well. I hope I was able to differentiate between the TOSI and siltuximab, and at the same time uh, also uh, understand use of tocilizumab with just neurotoxicity, what we call the ICANS, is not recommended. So the biology of the neurotoxicity is related to the peak of the CAR T cell. It's, 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 well, it's a CAR T cell product characteristics. You know, the, the amount, um, the, the proliferation, uh, as we talked about, the co-stimulated domains um, um, uh, tell uh, how the cell is proliferating and how fast, um, and the cytokine levels, uh, uh, and the uh, and secondary to endothelial activation and disruption, either resulting from the cytokines or, or from uh, other reasons. So from the various 
trials and various publications, these are all the cytokines that have been associated with the higher grade neurotoxicities and, um, uh, and some of the endothelial markers as well, the von Willebrand factors, uh, angiopoietin two versus angiopoietin one uh, ratios. Across multiple studies, the cytokine level seems to um, uh, tell us a, a similar story, a similar story uh, that these are the uh, common um, um, cytokines that seem, seems to be associated with a higher grade uh, neurotoxicity. Uh, same at, at our institution as well. Uh, we, we were, uh, as I said, we were part, part of a big, big trial of uh, ESCARTA and uh, the higher grade neurotoxicity are associated with uh, these um, uh, cytokines. Um, uh, and uh, we do have uh, drugs available for, the, for these cytokines, the IL-6, as I said, TOSI and Siltaxmab, and for IL-1, and the Anakindra is, is the uh, available um, mitigating agent. And as I said, um, Anakindra can be used uh, uh, because it's IL-1, can be used for uh, ICANS, uh, can be used for CRS, uh, and uh, Tocilizumab uh, or, uh, can only be used uh, with the CRS only. And there are various uh, trials looking at uh, anakindra using anakindra prophylactically be, uh, to mitigate the neurotoxicity. So the, this uh, cartoon pretty much depicts the, the two common problems we deal with, CRS on this side and the, and the ICANS. Uh, so uh, as the CAR T cells engage the tumor cells, the, um, uh, the macrophage uh, uh, dependent uh, chemokines are, are, are released and the macrophage activation goes on. And you have uh, various cytokines, uh, no, IL-6 and IL-1s, along with the von Willebrand factor and the angiopoietin-2 uh, uh, being uh, disrupted, leading to capillary leaks and at the same time leading to blood-brain barrier disruption uh, as well. It is not the CAR T cells that are that are causing the the toxicity. We have uh, we have done both at our institution and published in the in the trials. Lumbar puncture has been uh, confirmed that there are uh, CAR T cells uh, in the CSF, uh, but uh, these are not believed to be uh, causing the neurotoxicity itself. This is another cartoon depicting depicting the the um, what has been known. The, the cartoon really does not score the wonderful um, um, uh, translation experiments done by uh, Dr. Gerst and Dr. Turtle at the at the Seattle Fred Hutchinson and various and Dr. Santa Maso at um, uh, uh, Sloan Kettering. The, I mean, wonderful trials that are not um, well. Um, that, that led to the simplification of what's really is happening. From, from a quiescent endothelium, you now are dealing with a disrupted endothelium that has increased permeability because of the cytokines and, and the, and the, tra trans and the uh, changing from the angiopoietin 1 to angiopoietin 2, which, is a, um, which uh, uh, um, <clears throat> leads to increased permeability uh, of the endothelium. And there is a trial right now that, that uh, our transplant physicians are uh, uh, aware of this uh, drug, uh, difibrotide, because they do deal with a, a hepatic occlusive uh, disease. So they use this uh, medication for that. And they have um, uh, try, they, there's a trial going on using a uh, uh, endothelial stabilizer uh, uh, to mitigate these neurotoxicities. For me, I, I look uh, more of the neurotoxicity, more like a, nothing but a volcanic eruption, uh, the, all resulting from the endothelial uh, disruption and leading to edema. We as neurologists in dealing with the cancer, cancer patients, we know about the pre press or, or in the maternity ward as eclampsia, and all these are endothelial disruption. But the CAR T cells, I, I believe, is, is, is falls on, on, under the same spectrum of, of, the, of the same endothelial disruption. And, and we are also aware of our transplant pa patients having press or even an atypical press. So I, I, we, I strongly believe the CAR T cell neurotoxicity uh, um, follows the same uh, uh, pathogenesis uh, um, as um, uh, known. So this is a 35-year-old with a very refractory uh, relapsed uh, large B-cell lymphoma, received escarta, uh, you know, initially uh, doing uh, well, uh, and uh, within a short uh, period of time, uh, uh, ICES, um, uh, remember back then, um, only the encephalopathy, I can see the I see the encephalopathy scoring of the ICANS. So our encephalopathy scare, uh, score goes down to six. There's no motor weakness. Uh, she has received a high dose of solimedrol. And uh, in fact, she was recovering uh, very well, actually. 
And uh, uh, but despite that, uh, you know, we have uh, proceeded to go ahead, go ahead with the MRI. This is when our uh, encephalopathy has improved. As you can see, the entire pons, uh, you can see the uh, signal abnormalities. And um, uh, after 10 days, uh, she, uh, this MRI was um, as normalized. Uh, patient has clinically improved after um, uh, uh, three day, three day, three dose of uh, solimedrol. So, uh, so it's it's, it's um, <clears throat> this. I would call this an atypical press type. Uh, presentation uh, uh, from from uh, uh, Mass General, uh, we have these uh, pathology slides on patients who have died, and they compared. Uh, we have received CAR T cells, and they have died. First patient is the patient who has suffered from grade five uh, neurotoxicity or what we call a cerebral edema, uh, and uh, the other patient died uh, from a tumor progression and did not have the neurotoxicity. When they compared the pathology of the two. Patients, as you can see here, there's a, a proteinaceous um, a material seeping through the endothelium, the fibrin leak, uh, and a few activated rod microglia. And in comparison, all these are this fibrin leak, and all is not seen in the patient who has not died, uh, who has died, but not from the neurotoxicity, but from the tumor progression. So I think uh, the 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 uh, um, uh, preclinical uh, experiments. Uh, confirms uh, that is mostly related to the cytokines and the, and the endothelial disruption. Can we predict the neurotoxicities the, for, from the same, same group? Uh, they, were, uh, uh, they were able to look at the clinical parameters that includes the CRS, that includes the uh, C-reactive protein, something that you can get it easily by the bedside, uh, bedside and able to predict which patients are going on to have uh, higher grade, uh, uh, will develop ICANs or will have a higher grade ICANs. So based on this 14-point uh, 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 scoring, uh, they were able to say that a, a score of six, the cutoff of six, so uh, are you, is he able to reliably uh, predict which patients are will likely to have ICANs? Why is, why is this grading important? Uh, because uh, more and more these uh, um, CAR T cells will be, uh, will be moved from an inpatient setting to the outpatient setting. So can we reliably predict which patient is going to have a higher grade neurotoxicity? So a score of six seems to have a reliable prediction based on, um, based on simple assessments that we can do um, or readily available um, you know, from a standard labs and all without waiting for the cytokine panels. While the cytokine panels are easy to uh, study in a retro, in a, in a more in a retrospective fashion, they're not readily available at this time to influence our clinical decision making uh, at the bedside. So this is to su summarize uh, pretty much uh, what we have known so far. There's a CAR T cell infusion. Are there any baseline host factors that can predict which patient is going to have a higher grade neurotoxicity or develop neurotoxicity? The disease burden is mostly looked at LDH uh, uh, data uh, and seems to predict that there are a higher degree of disease burden, predicts a higher, uh, great, greater likelihood of developing CAR T cell neurotoxicity. And how about the, 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 the cell prior infused cell uh, characteristics, as we talked about, and th they do influence the CAR T cell. As, as I said, escarta compared to um, uh, axis cell is more likely to cause neurotoxicity. So the, the CAR T cell products itself do, do uh, affect uh, what grade of neurotoxicity the patient is likely to develop. And can we prophylax these patients? We talked about IL-1, the anakindra is now uh, is being studied and there are other um, uh, agents that are being studied, the granulocyte macrophage, colony stimulating factor antagonist and the CD40 antagonist. And we talked about the endothelium uh, stabilizer difibrotide that has been that is being studied for to prevent the prophylaxis. So by the time the neurotoxicity developed, it's, it's probably too late. Uh, you know, right now we are mitigating the neurotoxicity with, with steroids and steroids luckily seems to uh, take care of most of the patients. So to summarize, the neurotoxicity associated with CAR T cell, uh, these are some of the common symptoms, the confusion aphasia, uh, you know, mostly it's the language disturbance, the difficulty with writing, um, and then goes on to have, these are the words. So as you go down, these are the uh, serious um, uh, side effects, the, the motor weakness, seizures, cere you know, cerebral edema and the herniation. Uh, the median onset of the neurotoxicity is four to five days. The median duration, how long the duration of the neurotoxicity uh, prevails is five to 12 days. The instance is 20 to 64 percent. The, 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 the wide uh, variation is because of the, uh, the CAR T cell uh, that you're using. 
and, and the grade three um, uh, neurotoxicity is 11 to 64 percent. Again, the your CAR T cells that are infusing has a as a role in it. Um, so there's a lower grade with um, uh, um, uh, axis cell and a higher grade with escarta. We did, we did see uh, deaths and uh, uh, MD Anderson uh, were participated in the in this um, uh, uh, CAR T cell product. We had uh, two, uh, uh, two deaths at our institution, and um, I will go through quickly one of that um, uh, case. Is a 19 year been up a little bit here. Thanks. Nine, 19 year old with relapsed refractory ALL, where we received fluorarabine and cyclophosphamide as a preparatory agent. Uh, day two, she was uh, uh, fine. Um, and uh, she had a CRS that was easily managed with TOSI and IV fluids. Remember, these were the early days and the oncologists were reluctant to use uh, steroids. So, and there was uh, no neurological change from day two to day six. And suddenly there was a change in the mental status. She became stuporous. She was transferred in ICU and had a convulsive status. I would really like to emphasize what, what I call the delta change, the delta change in the grading of your neurotoxicity. The, the, you have a change in the um, uh, neurotoxicity score for like a six or seven within, you know, within a short period of time. Those are the patients you really, really like to keep a very close eye. So right now we are transferring our patients to the ICU for a higher grade um, uh, neurotoxicity or even for a higher grade uh, CRS to, to recognize uh, the bad outcomes. This was the initial EEG, not that bad. Uh, within a few hours, the, uh, it is a pretty much a flat EEG. Uh, and the uh, CT are uh, done immediately after transferring to the ICU. You can see the early intercerebral edema, even though this, uh, this uh, CT was read as normal because she's a 19 year old. But in retrospective, we feel there is some early cerebral edema that has really uh, blossomed over a, in a short period of time uh, within a six hours, as, as, as you see here. That's why um, I would like to refer to the cytokine uh, picture that I showed initially, which does mention the endothelial, the, uh, the capillary leak per syndrome, the endothelial disruption. So it's almost like a flash cerebral edema resulting uh, from, from this. This is another success story. 40 year old with refractory large B cell lymphoma. She received a um, uh, axis cell, uh, part of the trial. Initially, she, uh, patient develops a little bit of a grade one CRS uh, and the treat and goes on on a day two. Early, early development of higher grade neurotoxicity, something uh, uh, we would like to keep a very close eye on these patients compared to the median of uh, time frame. I said four to five days. So this patient goes on to develop confusion, um, um, uh, language disturbance, um, you know, again, the oncologists were reluctant to use uh, steroids in the in the beginning uh, uh, stages of these trials. Um, so uh, even the Kepra was increased. She goes on to have a higher grade encephalopathy, and the finally status epilepticus uh, status epilepticus on day five, and she's now intubated. Uh, and then uh, she was given a high dose solimedrol and the so seizures were controlled. Uh, as soon as she wakes up, we, we notice that she's quadriplegic, um, and then. Um, uh, so uh, she did undergo spinal tap. Uh, the spinal tap shows uh, increased protein. As I said, this is a reflection of the blood-brain barrier, which we commonly see if you were to do a lumbar puncture in these patients. Um, um, and if, uh, if, you have, if the patient already has an omaya, please uh, tap the omaya so you can have some information of what's happening on the other side of the blood-brain barrier. And uh, some of the spinal taps we have done, we have shown increased white cells. So, so these increased white cells are, are, are the transfused CAR T cells. So, there, there's no uh, uh, abnormal, uh, there's no malignant cells, and the few uh, cells that were positive were the transfused CAR T cells on this uh, patient's spinal fluid. This, uh, so this is the patient's uh, MRI when she's uh, when she was worse. That has that has improved over a period of time. You know, from day nine to day seventeen, the signal abnormalities uh, without any contrast enhancement have resolved. Same with this, she's quadriplegic. Remember, uh, so we see an abnormal uh, MRI on uh, day nine. And all these have resolved. And uh, what's the out? And these are the multiple seizures that we have seen on this patient. What's the what's the uh, outcome of this patient? She remains in clinical remission after four years. Uh, looking at this patient's initial uh, the lab data prior to the CAR T cell itself, she had a high C-reactive protein at baseline, and she had a high ferritin at baseline, and she had a higher LDH at baseline. So the high, you know, the uh, greater degree of tumor burden. Uh, you know, and the higher degree of C-reactive protein are likely predictors of which patients are going to have a bad outcomes with CAR T cells. Uh, 
So this patient always continues to remain in, uh, in, in remission. This is a 34-year-old uh, uh, who has received um, um, a CAR T-cell product. Initially, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, um, CRS uh, um, that has improved. And again, as I said, earlier uh, uh, presentation of ICANN, these are the patients you would really be want to be keep a close eye. Um, even though she developed uh, ICANS, the neurotoxicity by, by uh, uh, day seven, this has improved. But uh, later on, as the mental status improved, she now we now recognize she's quadriplegic. The MRI, as, as you can see here, compared to the other MRI, MRI of the spine, shows a cord uh, swelling. This patient, unfortunately, turned out to be there's a HHV6 encephal uh, re reactivation. Despite uh, 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 giving phosconate, this patient um, uh, clinical status has not improved, and she was transitioned to hospice care. So really, I like to emphasize the 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 keeping an eye of reactivation of these indolent viruses is something very mandatory, and it's been a part of our now a standardized um, uh, approach to uh, uh, look for these uh, viruses. In fact, patients are being screened uh, for HHV6, HHV7 uh, prior to the uh, CAR T cell product infusion. So how do, how do you decipher from this complex V? Uh, uh, with all, with, um, I like to put it in my slide, all the experience I had uh, you know, taking care of these patients at the bedside. Luckily, most patients have a treatable lower grades who are easily responding to a single dose of steroids or a few one day of steroids. Recognize the red flags of uh, CAR T cell, um, uh, higher grade neurotoxicity at the bedside. As I said, cl clinical seizures, new motor weakness or a cerebral edema or a papal edema. Uh, um, is something you have to keep an eye in the middle of the night. So higher grade encephalopathy, or, or as I was mentioning, the change in the grade of, uh, of the, of the uh, neurotoxicity is something we really have to keep a close eye. Get your data points in CT, prefer MRI if you can, possible. And uh, you know, so if, if, if your institution is able to do a PET scan, TCD, these all have been studied. You know, for, for us, we have, we have relied more on our EEGs at the bedside and the clinical examination. If a patient has OMIA tap the so OMIA, if you can do a lumbar puncture safely, you know, get, get the information. But it's, uh, and if a patient has a new motor weakness, please include spine MRI as well. You know, you, your EEG, please, um, I would highly recommend uh, having a, um, a neurophysiology EEG be available on these patients. We have recognized a new non-convulsive uh, non status epilepticus in these patients uh, frequently, and some have just responded to a simple dose of Ativan and optimization of the anti-epileptics. Um, and uh, so if you're unsure of the of the of uh, where we are, it's okay to use a higher grade at initial evaluation. Get your data points and decrease on the clinical grounds. And this is where we are really struggling at this time. And at what at what point you decrease a high high dose steroids and how, and after how many days of high dose steroids do you want to reduce in order to mitigate the inc you know, increased recognition of HHV6, HSV, and and, and other other indolent uh, hepatic uh, uh, viruses. For a higher clinical grades, uh, please transfer to the ICU. Uh, you know, there is increased uh, push for early use of uh, biologicals, as I said, anakindra. Manage the blood pressure just like you would manage any other uh, press patient. Uh, and look for other causes of encephalopathy. The hepatic, the cephalosporin is something I would uh, keep, uh, keep a close eye on it. And the thymine. Uh, and, and lately uh, also recognizes you know, in, in elderly people, the higher grade steroids can cause steroid psychosis. There are two patients I can easily recall where we have actually reduced the steroids after one day of a higher, uh, using higher dose and the patients were getting better as we reduced the steroids. So be, be mindful of steroid psychosis as well in those um, uh, elderly patients. Yeah, when you get a reconsult about the CAR T cell patient who has received a CAR T cell in the past and now not doing well at this time, please look for latent indolent viruses. So with that, I would like to switch gates to the checkpoint inhibitor neurotoxicity.